Okay, good. Welcome. All right. So um, I think we'll head, get started. Um, most of you know Genevieve, um, but if you don't, she's, she's our, um, our partner at the Sustainability at Work and a Master Cycler from my class, from class 35. <laughs> oh, no, 30, 31, sorry. <laughs> and um, we took the class together. Um, so Genevieve's going to get us started. Uh, we have lots to cover today. We're going to, um, along with Genevieve welcoming and starting us, um, we'll be going over the power presentation and the group and, and um, the uh, presentations for businesses, kind of why, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, she's going to go over the actual presentation that you'll be using for businesses. Um, and, um, and then I will go over like how to use zoom and while doing presentations, um, afterwards for folks who may not have done that. And also we'll talk about how that might work with some of the businesses. Um, and, um, I did want, uh, to point out that we are recording this where I'll be, um, I'm shortening it a, just a little bit and then um, putting it on the Master Recycler YouTube channel so that you can keep referring back to it if you'd like. Um, and especially as you're getting ready to do a presentation, you can refer back to it there. We'll be sending that link to you. Um, but also wanted to let you know that we're recording this. Genevieve? Yeah. So thanks everybody. Um, Lauren and I just wanted to start by saying we really value Master Recyclers and the work that you do. Uh, particularly in our changing world and the lack of face-to-face -face engagement. Engagement is still so very important to our work with community. Um, and just so you all know where Lauren and I are, the space where we are, um, we were, we were deeply saddened. We lost a bright planning colleague last week, uh, Tony Lamb. And Tony was just one of the most amazing colleagues. He looked for opportunities to focus equity and racial justice in all of our work. And he helped us have hard conversations and th think through solutions and always centering community. So it's our hope to continue the work that Tony started by elevating racial equity and certainly engagement with community members. And we look to Master Recyclers to help us fill that role of connecting with community in a really challenging time. Um, so strengthening our engagement uh, and working with Master Recyclers is gonna play a huge role for us to be able to continue that. So we, we really do appreciate you all being here uh, and testing this, testing this out with us. Lauren, you had some rooms. Yeah, so um, when so and I also wanted to put this in a little context. This this training, this is a training for you to be able to do some work and, and engagement, as Genevieve talked about. Um, and um, as most of you have read in the Master Cycler newsletter, um, I've really decided not to to keep diving forward and like running, you know, starting to offer courses for online for people when I don't feel like we're really offering as much opportunity and training for you all in this new world. And so um, really what I'm going to be focusing on is making it so master recyclers can reconnect again and build sense of community again as as master recyclers and also um, finding new ways for us to connect with the community in a way that's safe for you all and before i i feel that, that until i feel that it's safe and and you all are finding meaningful engagement and ways to get connected in the community it doesn't make sense for me to pump through and invite new people in um, and so this is kind of the kind of thing what we want to do. And so I want to make sure there's lots of opportunity for people to actually see each other and connect a little bit more. And that's a little hard to do with such large group. So I wanted to just start with a, um, a smaller group, just check in to say your name. I'm going to, I'm going to split us up into different rooms. Um, and then you're going to say your name and what class you, um, you were in, if you remember. And, um, and 
uh, what part of the region that you're from. Um, I know this is a Portland um, project, so most of you are from Portland, but not all, actually. I see quite a few folks from other parts of the region. So um, tell us that and uh, tell your group that. And then um, what, you, what you're looking for, why you're reconnecting in as a master recycler, um, and, um, and especially with this project uh, um, for business outreach and presentations um, through the Sustainability at Work pr program. So um, just what, what's gonna happen? How many people, just a raise of hands, has, has done breakout sessions with um, Facebook, I mean, with uh, Zoom before? I can't, yeah, okay, so um, I can't see all of you. So um, yeah, so it's, some of you will have experienced this, some will have not. So what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be kind of automatic, but you'll, you're just gonna sit there, you don't have to do anything. Um, and it's going to split up into different rooms. Um, and I will try to, Janet, to make it so that you end up with your phone and your computer at the same time. But we'll, I, will, I might have to shift you around. So you'll just be sitting there and often, um, all of a sudden some people will disappear. You'll be in a different room and other people <laughs> will appear. And um, then you can unmute your phone um, you're, because there's just a few of you in the room and then you can um, do your check-in and, and decide who's gonna go first, okay? So, and then I'm gonna give you an, a warning when it's about one minute before we're gonna go back. We're gonna do this for five minutes so you can kind of chat with each other as well. Um, but I'm gonna give you a one minute warning. You'll, you'll see an announcement that, it's, um, that we'll be getting back together and it'll automatically bring you back to, to this group. Okay, so here we go. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people. So if I do five rooms, I might do four rooms. Um, and now I gotta move Janet so she's in with her phone. And then we'll be. <laughs> All right, have fun. Anyway, anyway. Um, yeah, hey, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hello. So prompts, it's the introduction and just a little bit about ourselves. Yeah. And what class you're in, which will, will be impressive with you, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to just Google it through my email and find out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so my name is Michael, and I was class of 52. I don't know what we're on now, but that changed ages and ages ago. 75? Uh, Are we the last? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> and John, what class were you in? And then also why you're, why you're here. What, what you're wanting to get out of. Sure. Did you say that already, Michael? No. So... Uh, I've always really enjoyed being a math recycler, and I did most of my community service through the Sustainably at Work arm. Um, and then that was really probably about four or five years ago, and then we've been other things. But it's always a community that I enjoyed, and I felt like I really needed probably a refresher. I really hope that things have changed in the recycling world since I did most of my training and my teaching. Um, so that's why I was like, hey, this sounds like a fun thing, and I had a gap in my schedule, so here I am. That's awesome. Nice to meet you. Uh, I actually yeah. also just took this opportunity. I, I appreciated the uh, experience learning. I went to my email and looked up my class number as well, and was in 66 a couple of years back. And yeah. I uh, used to live out in the Hillsborough area. Actually, now I'm in Vancouver. So still close and still get into Oregon quite often, uh, or at least used to before March. Um, and I was kind of, you know, connected in the environmental 
realm of things, both previously with Solar World and now with Burgerville, I've overseen some of the environmental initiatives, um, but really um, haven't done a whole lot of engagement with the uh, opportunities for volunteering after class, but um, you know, kind of doing the here and there, getting out and having conversations, trying to keep up with the evolving changes and in, in the recycling world. Um, but we really saw this opportunity and wanted to re-engage with what you guys are up to and see how to move forward and, and really get back into volunteering more, um, even if it's in a virtual way. So excited to, to hear what's coming next. Nice. Well, uh, I'm Alexandra. I'm class of 75. So actually the reason, well, I live in Portland. The reason I'm here is because we didn't get the chance to do anything <laughs> because when we finished like a week after quarantine started. So I would love to have some ideas on how to do some virtual engaging. And yeah, and I like, I'm an environmental engineer. I study my career because of waste. Mm -hmm. So doing something to reduce the impact, environmental impact to waste is my passion. So yeah, that's why I'm here. That's wonderful. Okay, so y'all can chat for a few minutes, it looks like, before we're... <laughs> So, oh, you're waiting for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lauren. I'm in class 31. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Lauren. And um, I'm here because I'm super excited you're here. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, re I'm ready for us to all re-engage again. And, and um, sustainability at work was the first group that seemed like they were ready to put mass recyclers to work. So I was like, all right, let's do a training for it then. They, they have businesses who are looking for presenters. So we'll actually be able to put stuff on the calendar and get y'all getting some engagement. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate the opportunity and facilitating this as well. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what, we never a lot of on engaging presentation back in the back in the day and just like people get really into it and then you talk about mixed material that blows their mind and anyway it's just a blast exactly. so where did you present what kind of places did you present michael god um i felt like i did a lot of law firms mm -hmm. And then a bunch of mechanical engineer firms mm -hmm. um, kind of go through, you know, I'm, I'm an architect now and I work with a lot of businesses designing their offices. And so it's sort of pigeonholes. We talk about sustainability and goals for the project and then I talk about operations and talk about recycling. Uh, and I definitely design in like recycling facilities into their office. Like, hey, here's where your glass goes and whatnot. Just kind of like do it without it being told. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but like just you know all those conversations are intertwined and, and just talk about how people work and you know, how it can be more sustainable and what works well for their practices yeah That's right. great i'm gonna go skip into the other room so that when people populate i'll be there so okay you. okay see, see you, you. So Lauren, you are muted. But that's okay, yeah, because you're next, right? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wanted, I wanted to give a little context to of, of what we're gonna do with folks. Um, you know, I had talked about how we um, are wanting to do, make it so that there are more meaningful ways for mouse recyclers to connect now that we have to do it in a safe and distant way. And so I've been doing a lot of um, interviewing our regular 40 community partners and asking them, you know, what are you all doing? Is there any need for mass recyclers in the work you're doing now? And so, and, and so that, you know, prompting them, thinking about it, being creative with them about how we might um, work with them differently. And Genevieve was one of the first to really bite and say, yes, actually we have businesses that have been looking for presentations because their green teams in, in businesses are wanting to make connection as well and keep things 
um, connected and, and have a, a there there. And so inviting a presenter to do a basic, you know, recycling is a good way to just getting people back connected in their green teams and businesses in the same way that we're doing that right now. So um, I really want to thank Genevieve for being ready to jump in. And and, and I also want to just let you know that because you, you, that you being here isn't just a training like many of our other workshops have been in the last few months that we are going to have Genevieve's actively outreaching to those businesses who've been asking for presenters and saying, okay, we're, we're going to have a team here of, of people that are ready to present. Um, and so give us some dates and we'll start working it. So that's, um, that's what's kind of prompting this, this moment now where we really will have some fun ways for you to get engaged again. And some of you have done this quite a bit. Um, actually, a good half of you have done presentations through SAW and, and often directly with Genevieve. Um, in the real world. Um, so this will just be kind of going over the new PowerPoint that she created so that it's, it's a little bit easier to use online and then, um, and then how we can use the online programs to, to use the PowerPoint. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Genevieve. And you're terribly generous, uh, Lauren. The, I, I cannot take the credit for the PowerPoint. It's my uh, esteemed colleague, Lindsay, Lindsay Mazur, who is just a fantastic um, uh, behavior change specialist. She does fantastic work and we all benefit from it. So you all benefit from that as well. I did make some modifications and try and streamline things. Um, so for the presentation, a, a lot of it may look familiar to, to, um, to many folks, but we, um, we did really want to focus just on recycling for this one. So it doesn't cover composting. That's a great hook to get your uh, very interested audience to say, oh, can you come back and present on composting? So yes, so get their, get their appetite wet with a really thorough uh, discussion on um, recycling and then um, explore other opportunities as well. And, you know, as, as Lauren mentioned, you know, the history of, of working in, it, in our engagement with businesses really did exist in a person-to-person -person way. Sustainability at Work folks would go to a business, meet up with a contact that either reached out to us or we were given a name to follow up with. And it was, it really started with a walkthrough. Show us what your workplace is like. Let's look for opportunities off the bat. Tell me what you're excited about and tell me what you're interested in learning more about. Um, so we often did a workplace walkthrough, even if we were just going and doing a presentation. It was, let me see the recycling area, because that often, as you all may recognize, may uh, reveal some opportunities or missed opportunities uh, or areas to focus on. Um, so given that we, we are not doing walkthroughs, the um, the presentation is really hopefully going to give um, some clarity to the staff who are participating either as a green team or an all staff if it's a small office. Um, and we're just going to have to roll with the times right now. Uh, we recognize that not everybody has access to uh, computers and computer equipment, so we, we recognize we're not meeting everybody. But we want to be we want to be able to um, start with and um, encourage all of you to hone in on your great recycling presentation skills, um, so that we can meet the need for those businesses who are saying, "I need a little something to get my my staff engaged." And what better reason to gather than to talk about recycling, right? So I'm going to start my presentation. I'm just gonna I'm going to time it because I am, I'm a talker. If you've ever, <laughs> ever heard me give a presentation, I'm quite the talker. So I'm going to try and get through this. <coughs> I'm showing my notes page. Can everybody see it? I hope so. Just a process yes. thing. If anybody has questions, I'll be monitoring the um, chat. So you can, while Genevieve's presenting, just so that, um, so that you know there will be somebody looking in the chat, so you can type in there, but you can also just write it down and Genevieve will have Q&A at the end of this. Yes. All right, and I'm also realizing that I'm covering my own notes. Okay, that's better. Okay. 
So uh, you can see my notes. This is pretty much how I start things. I'm Genevieve Joplin. I'm with the Sustainability at Work program. I'm also part of a Master Recycler program, an intensive eight-week educational program um, offered here in the city of Portland. Uh, I was part of class number 39, 31, sorry. Um, and I love how passionate people are about recycling in Portland. So I hope to share a little more information, in-depth information, so that you can help with recycling bright. My goal for this presentation is that you learn something new, either a what or a why question is answered for you. So one of the, one of the um, things I wanna share is that the rules for recycling in Portland and our surrounding area are the same for home and at work. This is true of both Multnomah County, so Portland proper, Washington County, and Clackamas County. We all follow the same guidelines. And while the presentation focuses on what goes in your blue roll cart and your yellow glass bin, there's additional information on other materials that can be recycled separately, but not in the blue bin. So again, this is really just focusing on recycling. Oops. All right, so to start us off, recycling is one of the easiest, most feel-good environmental actions you can take. It's so tangible. You have something in your hand and you put it in the recycling container and you feel good. And you should feel good. This stat is one of the reasons recycling aluminum saves 95% of the energy required to make the same amount of aluminum from its virgin source. So there's a ton of statistics I included some on this page, you can access them as you need to. But recycling can also be confusing. How many of you have ever walked up to the waste bins holding something you need to get rid of and stood there trying to figure out what container it should go in? Many, many folks in the room often raise their hand at this point. They're like, yep, been there. Part of the reason recycling is confusing is because it differs from state to state and often city to city. In our region, our government, our hauling companies, our material sorting facilities, and the end market producers regularly meet to make decisions and to manage for the recycling system. It's a hyper local system and it's very important that decisions do not happen in a vacuum. Which leads me to a common and very understandable myth about recycling that any item with a recycling symbol on it should go into your recycling bin. As we know as mass recyclers, there's no regulation on labeling something as recyclable. A material may be technically be recyclable, but not realistically recyclable, which is why in reality, we have to follow the recycling guidelines. As I mentioned, the people within our recycling community come together to decide, to decide what can be recycled. The businesses who pick up, the companies who sort, the manufacturers who buy it, and the ed educators and local governments who teach people what can go in. And there are two main deciding factors for why some things can be recycled and not others. First, is there a strong market for it? Recycling is an industry, so it has to make economic sense. And when the price of oil is cheap, it's more financially viable for companies to use it to make plastic products rather than for them to use recycled plastic. It would be way too confusing to change the list allowed to, um, based on what the market bears. So Portland only allows items that have a strong, steady market. I want to point out the images in here will show up again in a later slide. The second decision factor is can the material be easily sorted? In Portland, our paper, cardboard, metal, plastic bottles and tubs can go in one bin to make it easier for people to recycle, leading to higher levels of recycling. Again, glass is always collected separately as it has special automated sorting due to its hazardous nature. But once all those commingled items get to the sorting facility, they'll be separated out to their end market so essentially, paper goes back into separated paper, cardboard goes into cardboard, metal, plastic bales that will be used in new manufacturing new materials. 
The sorting is done here in Oregon in big warehouses where both machines and people work to remove items that aren't recyclable and sort out the rest by material type. Some things don't work well in our sorting system, like small lids and caps, and also plastic bags, which get tangled up in the cogs of sorting machinery and have to shut down the whole sorting system. I'm gonna play a real brief video that gives you the behind the scenes view. As master cyclers, we've seen it, but this is a very eye-opening video for, um, for your business uh, attendees. What happens when your curb, when your material leaves your home? The, the truck comes and picks it up, uh, mixes it with all your neighbors. They'll drive to a facility such as uh, the one we have here, and the material will get weighed, and then it gets dumped on the uh, tipping floor, uh, and then we put it through our sort line. So it, once it gets to the sort line, uh, it, we pre-sort it for any materials like plastic bags or, or textiles or things that shouldn't be in there uh, that might jam up our machines. Uh, then it goes to a sorting screen that basically it's cardboard, goes over that screen. The rest of the material will fall through. And then it goes to another set of sorting screens where it's sized down to 2D and 3D, meaning round containers or flat paper typically. The paper will go over the screen. The Looks like it paused, Genevieve. Thank you. Did everyone pause? The base commodity will then bail it up. So aluminum will go to an aluminum smelter, tin cans to a tin smelter, uh, paper goes to paper mills, uh, plastic goes to a uh, wash and grind, and then goes back into other plastics. Um, and that's the, the short story about where your cycling goes. So that was Vinod Singh. He's the manager of Far West Recycling over in Hillsboro. And we include this video because it literally is a picture's worth a thousand words. I think the, um, the image at the end leads us to this next question, the image of the cat food container. How clean do recyclables need to be? And the, the, the concept that I wanna bring up here is recycling right. We've seen serious contamination issues happen in recent studies. And I wanna emphasize that recycling right is as important as recycling. So we have a few key standard uh, uh, ideas to keep in mind when recycling. Recycling should be empty, clean, and dry. That's what we mean by recycling right. Rinse, things, rinse the food out, shake it dry, but you don't need to scrub them sparkling clean. All right, now we're gonna get into the, the, the nitty gritty. So again, recycling at home is the same as recycling at work. It could be that in your office, folks get recycling messed up and that's where proper recycling posters through sustainability at work can really help. We provide these for free. So with paper, really anything that, has, that is made of paper can go in. Your junk mail, envelopes, notebooks, magazines, all of that can go in. No need to take off uh, plastic paper envelopes, staples, paper clips, even the spiral bound notebooks. All of those, all of those coils and things will get um, filtered out at the paper mill when they're, when they're uh, bubbling it up and churning up this great paper the pulping process, they'll, they'll uh, be able to skim that off. Additionally, cardboard, fantastic material for recycling. We wanna make sure that um, we give special attention to takeout containers and pizza boxes. We will be uh, speaking to them in, the, in a future slide, but those should not be going in. Those are not included in our cardboard. Cartons and Tetra Pak containers are allowed. These are picked out of recycling in the sorting process and set, sent to a specific recycling facility designed to process them. That's in a way that separates the paper from the foil or the plastic.
the frozen food containers and takeout containers contain an injection, an injection of the wet strength chemical. So they're designed to keep the hot coffee from coming through the paper cup or the food from soaking through the, the box or to keep your frozen meal from getting freezer burned. They're designed to do that job, but they ultimate, ultimately make it really hard to separate out the paper for reuse. So ultimately takeaway is throw away and, and we get a lot of people realizing, oh my gosh, I've made a mistake all my life. Take this as a grain of, of knowledge and uh, to again, be doing the recycling right. Paper towels, napkins, and tissues are not recyclable. Once they are used, they're contaminated either by a biohazard or um, by food contamination. So we don't, want, we don't want to see paper towels in recycling. Metal is one of the most important things to recycle in terms of the energy and resources saved by recycling. Here you can see there's a, a, a few examples of, of metal. There's a no need to take off the paper wrapper on your containers. And if you can, you can keep that li little bit of the lid attached, which makes sure that the, the pieces of metal uh, make their whole way through the sorting system. You can put smaller pieces of metal in adult beverages, other small lids, and then crimp it closed by pushing up against the, uh, the sink or by stepping on it. So small pieces do make their way through. Because again, the magnets in the process will pull those, uh, those bigger pieces and then the whole piece gets uh, recycled. Some metal materials that people are surprised to uh, realize can be included are metal paint cans, as long as they're free from any paint. If there, there's dried paint, it's fine. And spray, empty spray cans can be included as well. Um, no lids, take the, the, um, the lid off, but otherwise these can go in. A special note to the paint, if there is paint left over, you can bring it to any of the paint retailers and they'll recycle it as part of the paint care program uh, and Metro Paint Recycling. I also want to point out that as long as, um, as long as the containers are empty, we can still recycle some of these uh, more toxic chemicals. If it's flammable, it can be included. If it's poisonous, it should go to hazardous waste. I want to remind folks that we do have people sorting out our materials and we don't want anybody, you, the hauler or the um, sorting facility folks to deal with hazardous waste. It's a huge health risk and we don't, we don't want any, anything um, to happen to the folks in this, in this uh, system. Okay, so in plastic, plastic the, this is one of the, the biggest um, areas where I get the biggest size of relief. Oh, good, ignore the numbers. Please don't pay attention to the numbers. They're really not about communicating what's recyclable. In Portland, it's all about the shape. So we talk about a bottle, tub, a bucket, or a jug. You'll notice there are no lids on these because again, small pieces of plastic won't get picked up by a metal, uh, by a magnet. They'll fall through the cracks and they can potentially be a projectile um, on the, 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 the milk jug or two liter bottles. Um, we have heard of these flying off during the sorting process and um, another reason why staff wear hard hats. A reminder, anything with a plastic, um, any plastic with a neck is recyclable. Also some images of um, cleaning products. So soap and conditioner and all of those things can all be recycled as well. Give them a gentle rinse. Oops, that advanced for me. So all of these are examples of plastics that is not a bucket tub, bottle, or jug. Here again are those single-use plastics. 
as much as people can think about taking things that they need or don't need, these are examples of plastics that are just not gonna get into the recycling system. The one note I'll make on the plastic bags is that you can bring them to a plastic bag recycling program, often at the entryway to many of our grocery stores, uh, but they cannot go in your, in your blue bin. And this is what happens when they go in the sorting facility. So a good reminder is also at work, if you notice that you have a cleaning company that's bagging up class, uh, your recycling, is to make sure that they, the bags don't go into the recycling. That's where sustainability at work can also help with making sure that uh, conversation happens. A few more notable things. Any plastic labeled as compostable or biodegradable or made from, pla from plants should not be put in your recycling. It's a contaminant because it's designed to break down quickly, which is the opposite of what you wanna do when you're making new products out of recycled material. Moving on to the glass, our separate container. We always, again, recycle glass separately so we don't pose a risk to workers who are, uh, could be injured by broken glass. The glass you'll see here is food and drink, food and beverage containers. There's no need to sort by color. I often date myself by saying I moved to Portland when we had to sort out our glass by color. We have a fantastic state-of-the-art facility on Columbia Boulevard that um, sorts out by color in, a, in an amazing um, fashion. It's, it's very cool to see, it's very fast, and it's often sent right down the road to Owings, Illinois to make more uh, microbrew bottles. The one thing that uh, they are asking at, at eCullet at the glass recycling facility is to enjoy your bread beverages and enjoy a squeeze of fruit, but don't put the rind into the bottle. And just a reminder that tempered glass, so pint glasses or Pyrex or dishware, these are not the same as the food and beverage containers for recycling. These should not, these should go in the trash or maybe donated if they're in good condition. Then a final item of note is other toxics. So these are other items that should not go in your garbage or recycling. These include batteries, compact fluorescent light bulbs, poisons, and fertilizers. The number 2343000 is, when, is uh, the number I introduce at this time. It's to con get connected with the Metro's uh, Recycling Information Center. 2343000 can help you find a uh, way to take your hazardous waste to a proper facility and have it disposed of correctly. What do I do if I don't know if it's recyclable? There's two mantras. We have when in doubt, throw it out or find out. Again, 2343000, we will connect you with a, a live person I love calling the Metro Recycling Information Line on uh, the weekends. If you're doing a, a garage clean out and you've suddenly found that you've got old carpet or an old appliance, calling 2343000 will get you connected to someone who can help you look up um, a, a, a potential reuse or a donation for unusual items that aren't gonna end up in your recycling bin either. We also have recycleornot.org Recycle or Not has uh, features a lot of the confusing items and can tell you what to do with them. Instagram, where you can uh, upload your image as kind of seen here on the smartphone and they can, uh, you'll get answers on that as well. So on the topic of donating, Reducing the amount of stuff you consume first, reusing the stuff you have, and finally, when you can't get any more, any more use out of it, then recycle it.
So I'm going to run through a few common ways we can all reduce and reuse. Do you really need it? Avoid buying things you don't need. Avoid giving people things they don't need. If you've gone to a Goodwill store, there's examples of these products everywhere. Reduce single-use packaging and one-time use items. Some folks like to call this refuse, and I love that idea. Say no to things you don't need. Don't need a bag, don't need the fork or the cheese or the, or the napkins, all of that I have at home. Reuse, use your reusable items instead. There are tons of places in Portland where you can buy, sell, or donate used items. Rebuilding Center, Scrap, Free Geek, fantastic places where you can donate usable items and these nonprofits can uh, make a little money on those, but also keep, uh, keep usable items in our system and, and out of the landfill. We also have fantastic libraries, both for books, for movies, for DVDs and music. We have fantastic sharing libraries where you can borrow a can canning equipment. If you only need it once a year, why keep it all to yourself? Bring it out, join a kitchen share, and share those um, amazing items with your neighbors. Resourceful PDX is one of these sources for learning about reuse organizations in Portland. And the other, other fantastic organizations are about repair, so fixing your usable items. Both Portland Repair Finder, which is an industry to support computer and shoe fixing, and Repair PDX. When we were able to gather, they would host repair cafes where community volunteer fixers would would offer free support to community members needing items, small items like electronics or jewelry or bikes, um, and they've been pretty, pretty well attended and, and appreciated. So now is when I would open it up for questions. I'm gonna just buzz through. We do wanna remember the Recycle Right mantra, clean, empty, dry, and on the list. And we thank you. For, for your part in doing all of this work. So now is when I'm going to say, that was about 23 minutes, which was my goal to get through in 30 minutes so that you'd have a chance to open it up for Q&A. So I'm gonna say, any, any questions? Any, was everyone able to hear, to see? So Genevieve, there was one question in the chat was about um, paint. Um, you had suggested that that um, that you should make sure the paint is dry before putting it in a container, but it should be almost entirely empty as well. And I think there was a question about, oh, can you let you know more than an inch dry and then put it in? So, so what I've okay. So I think. Ideally, you're going to use up all the paint. I'd say if you have maybe a third of a can of paint left, that's worth bringing to a paint care center. Um, I think if you have, I mean, it's really traced. You're going to have to leave the lid off and put it in a, in a sunny spot for it to dry out. Um, but it can, it, can, it can happen. Paint just takes, it may take a little bit longer. So Jessica Zahn raised her hand. And then I, said, I did not. I was just giving the react clapping reaction. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh okay. I've got a question. Raise hand. So I, I see Liz and then Chris and then Tina. Um, can you hear me? Okay, I just switched stuff. Um, non-recyclable plastics there. I think it was an image with some single-use items. Yeah, the... Or is that not an appropriate question? Well, let's dig into that. 
Um, so we used the clamshell and the forks and um, the cup, right? Yeah. And so those are, those are materials that have never been allowed in our recycling system. Right. Is, is the question, why did we choose those? Because they represent... Yeah, when talking about, like, you know, using cheap oil in, to replace um, recycled plastic as your raw material, I guess that maybe that's just something that I saw in it, a one-off and not worth anything, as opposed to using an image with commonly recycled items that would be part of a recycling market that would replace crude oil. Okay, wow. so it, I think the connection was the images that you saw were are not part of the recycling system, and so that's why they're they're never okay. going to be they're never going to be. Well, let's talk through this. They, they would never be recycled for their plastic material because they can't go through the system, so they're not going right. to be contributing to a recycled. A recycled plastic raw material, whereas the yogurt cups and the PET bottles would. So there, I guess there's two factors. So maybe it would be go going back. I'm I'm trying to trying to understand. And maybe I, I bring it up as as um, someone that we might be presenting to if we're talking about you know you could use crude oil to make plastic or you could use you know, but you're going to use that when it's cheaper because it's a business. Um, but when you could replace, when a business could make um, something new from recycled plastic, I guess I saw that as we've got that image, we chose to have that one image there of non-recyclable plastics. And I wonder if in anyone's mind listening to the presentation, they might say, oh, so are those recyclable? Or I don't know, just by highlighting them, I could be making something up. But it, um, it was just a question I had, like, why choose non-recyclable plastics in there? But maybe it's a moot point. And I agree that with those, I like the amount of information that's given about markets, because I think people are curious um, without going into too much detail, where I think my question is starting to get into too much detail. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, but I guess when I saw that, I was surprised like oh those are we telling people are some people going to walk away with a message that those are recyclable even though later on you go on and clearly say they're not so okay. just maybe just a question for I don't know okay I I think it's fair to 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 ch challenge I, the yeah. assumption that I had that this is kind of one of the one of the um one, one of the points of recycling that it, ha it has to make um, economic sense and there's not a market for the forks and the clamshells because they don't go through the system. So yeah. uh, let me see what I can do to try and true that up a little bit more, Liz, if, if, um, if that And Genevieve, I feel like if I, when I use this presentation to a business, I don't feel like I'll get hung up at all. You know, I feel like I could make sure that point is really clear. Um, but I guess I saw that was a little bit surprised. So I okay. wanted to bring it up. Okay. okay. Thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was, um, was it a Kate? No, a Tina had a question, Lauren? Yeah, sorry, I muted myself. Tina and then Julie is raising her hand too. And then there's a few people that are on the phone. And so we, we might um, see if they have questions since they can't raise their hand. But let's do Tina and then Julie, and then we'll do that. Um, my point, Gen uh, Genevieve, is that the same thing that Lauren said, is that you're not actually supposed to have any paint in the can, um, that it has to be an inch or less in the can for paint to be recycled, and that we don't want to encourage people to open the lid and let it sit out, because that's not what Metro wants. So there, so... Some else, because it's, you dry it. So right. if there's, if there's, so clarify the speaking point to if you have a little bit of paint less, like an, an inch, inch or less, or less, then you can dry it out and it can be included. Okay. Right. But what okay. I heard you say was not that. Right. So okay. just adding that as a talking point from your feedback. 
Okay. Great. Thank you. Julie? I was just going to say that I've used that presentation quite a bit and I've never had it going back to Galaxy. I don't know your name. It your is coming up. Liz. I, I've never had um, somebody question that. So I don't know that it makes sense to spend time maybe yeah. trying to figure something out, Genevieve. I think it's fine. Okay. So it might be Thanks. reviewing the, the talking points and saying, hey, I'm struggling with this and let's talk it out. I'm totally fine with, with looking for ways to make the information easier to understand. And, and so um, the folks that are on the phone and, and we can't visibly see you, does somebody have a question that they wanna unmute themselves and or they can also, if you're on a computer, you can type it. I just want to make sure there's space for folks that don't have video. A uh, quick question, maybe just an update. Um, small empty propane tanks like Colbin, et cetera, uh, from what I recall, were not recyclable here, but it seems like they are in the flammable but not poisonous category. Uh, where do they fall nowadays? Those are, those are part of our hazardous waste. Okay, perfect. Unfortunately, I think a lot of those do show up in recycling. Yeah. Let me just, I'm just I, double checking. I have a question. Um, you show the, which is something I started doing a couple of weeks ago, and I like it, like to collect all the leads, the metal leads in a bigger can, and then just like close it. And I was thinking, could you do that in plastic or like, what happens if, if we don't tell people and then people start putting leads on, on like, I don't know, the jewel container and should we maybe clarify that when we do our presentation? Yes, please. Um, the reason why I, the, the metal ones were highlighted um, is because in the sorting process, the magnets can pull those. So that's why those can be included. But the, the imagery of the plastic um, bottles and, and jugs all have the lid removed. And I do say lid removed because they're too small, they fall through the cracks, they can become projectiles. So I think that hitting, hitting those, Alexandra, would be a great way. Unlike plastic, these lids can be collected, crimped, closed, and, and make their way through the sorting process. Okay. Yeah. I think that's actually a really good point that I've started adding it when I tell people the crimp thing is I say, don't try this with paper or metal or plastic. This is only true with metal because some plastic, even if it has the same number, may contaminate the other kinds of plastics um, because it has a different melting level or whatever. So just, just do this with metal. It's one of the reasons I don't emphasize the crimping story very much. <laughs> Um, I also just see here in the chat, um, I think this was in, in regards to the, the materials that were used in that image with the oil and the, um, it's a good time to say these are good to avoid because they are not recyclable. Absolutely. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, Sharon. And another thing that was added is that they can be made from recycled content, which is a really, that's a good point. So, yeah. You can, you can definitely find a non-recyclable cold drink cup made out of recycled content plastic. Good. So are there questions about the process? I mean, I think that we, we've got the, I mean, what, Genevieve, you want to kind of talk through how will this work in terms of people signing up as volunteers to use this presentation, what they'll be equipped with, how the communications will work, a bit like that. Yeah, so typically what we hear, I think I have about um, eight businesses who have, um, who I've been in contact with since earlier in this year. A few were interested in Earth Day presentations for their staff, and we know Earth Day looked quite a bit different this year. Very few opportunities to engage with our, um, with our local community. So I've reached out and um, I have a list of businesses that are interested in having a master recycler give a presentation. And what we are, 
anticipate what I'm anticipating is for them to figure out the details of the day and the time and how long you have. So I would say at a minimum, we need 30 minutes to really have a, um, a good recycling presentation and, and question and answer period. Um, so all of you on my, um, on, this, on this chat, I'm sorry, on this Zoom call and those who, who didn't join us um, will be on my, kind of on my short list of interested business presenters. And what I'll do is I'll email everyone out once I have all the details, and then my ask is that you connect with them to ask if there are particular questions that have come up for the staff. With, our, with most places working remotely, it may not be as, uh, as in-depth of a, what are, the, you know, what are the problem areas? It may, may be a long time since people have had interaction with recycling in a workplace. They may have questions now that they've moved to, to working at home and have just general questions. Again, um, I think it's an opportunity just to, to really be the expert in the room and answer these folks' questions um, about recycling. Um, and then I, I think the, the presentation that we've had in the past, um, I've given out on flash drives. So what i um, trying to think through if, if we can, is it, Lauren, could we post this on the Master Cycle? Okay, yeah. So we'll probably post this on the Master Cycler website that you can download. And I think what we were what we were thinking was that we can have one to send to the business, which would be just the the imagery and not the notes. And then you might have on your smartphone the notes that you could um, read along with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so. Um, one, one thing we want to clarify is that Genevieve is going to get a sense of what, what system they're using. Are they using Zoom or Teams or, you know, what, what kind of program they're using to connect their staff to the meeting? And that she's going to really encourage the business to be the one that runs that process because their team is already used to joining that meeting. Um, and, and so, you know, that hopefully will not the shoe, she'll get that kind of clarification beforehand and let you know what you're going to be joining, but um, it shouldn't be your responsibility to set up a Zoom meeting or, you know, manage that part of the meeting. Um, and, and, and so really, they should be the ones who load up the PowerPoint and share it. Um, but if you are super comfortable with sharing your screen because you're already really comfortable with it, you can opt to do that instead if you want to drive more instead of saying next slide please next slide please so it's kind of you know you may want to to have that conversation with the with the part with the business as well if you're pretty savvy and comfortable with doing powerpoint presentations online it's um it's a lot to try to do both even if you are used to um doing both um it's just so so just know you that you have some options to kind of go back and forth and thank you for bringing that up, Lauren. And just uh, as an example, Lauren and I, or no, um, I, I did this presentation with a colleague on Microsoft Teams and she could see the video, but she couldn't hear any of the video. So I was a little concerned um, and Lauren and I met up a few minutes beforehand and I was very happy that Zoom, you could actually hear the video with Vinod um, speaking because it just adds so much more to have, to be kind of guided through what you're seeing. Um, and it's not my area of expertise, that's been odd. So it was, it's uh, really, if it, it's not a make or break, it's also something that you can um, ask your host to have on a, a separate screen and, and run separately if it's, if it's not over Zoom. Um, so I'll think through a few, a few of those, like kind of remember this might not work and, see how we can get some some ideas yeah and then and Tina's got a, um, a good question about making it more interactive and creating a, a quiz and that kind of thing we really wanted to start this with something that would be more accessible to all master cyclers to be able to do and when you start using quizzes and things like that it, it gets um, 
a lot more advanced. Um, but if you are savvy and want to try to add that into it, great. Um, uh, you're welcome to, to play with that. Um, I do like Tina's suggestion of another conversation piece that you want to have with your business um, partner that, that's signed you up is ask them, can you please be the person who manages the chat so that people can ask their questions on the chat, just like I did with Genevieve. I was kind of modeling that so you guys could see how that would work. Um, it, and so it, whoever has requested um, having you there and, and the person that you've talked through all this with, can you ask them too, could you please tell people to, to ch put your questions in chat and then um, monitor them and, and read them? Um, it does really help to have somebody doing that because it's not, it seems like you can all just jump in and ask questions. If you haven't been on Zoom yet, um, you'll, you'll discover very quickly that you can't, with all those human skills that we've picked up on when it's okay to jump in and when or not, that we can't even see who's looking at what anymore. Our eye contact is gone. <laughs> and so um, that's all, you know, it's just, it, it's just really nice to have somebody who's kind of monitoring and having people raise their hands and, and, and call it on people. And the speaking of which, Julie is raising her hand. You have a question, Julie? I should probably be using chat, right? Um, no, I said so, raising hands is good. The one thing, I mean, I would definitely want to do a practice with another master recycler or something. I mean, you know, I get worried that I could have a group there and then I can't make it work or, I, you know, I haven't done that, so I don't know if others are feeling that way, but I would definitely, before I did this, want to have a way of practicing, please. That's a great idea. So we have the email list, um, and we'll, um, we'll share it so that you all can um, see if, it, uh, do a call out. Anybody want to do this with me for a little while? You can also practice it with family. Um, and you know or some, some a group that you're already joining with and that, that counts as payback by the way to even in your practicing time um but i do want to remind you julie that that it is not going to be your job to make it work i mean I'm, I'm hearing that anxiety and really because you're joining a business um that's already meeting this is their their turf it's their job to make sure the av works right and so and and you want to verbally make sure that they understand that jevany jevany will be having that conversation with them but it's good for you to keep emphasizing that with them um that you know not to you know just be like no you're doing it right you're doing it but <laughs> <laughs> but just pointing them out that you're the, you're the recycling expert, not the Zoom expert in this room, right? And hopefully whoever's invited you to the meeting will, will be the one who's managing that part. Did you want to add anything to that before I go to the next question? I, I was just going to say, you were the invited guest. You were the featured speaker. You are not managing all the systems. So. Yeah. But it's still a really good idea to practice. Yes. Karen, did you have something you wanted to ask or add? <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize I could unmute myself. Um, so are we going to have access to both the scripted and the unscripted stack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. That was easy. And then, um, Julie, I'd love to practice with you. <laughs> great. You got partners already. Exchange. And Dakota also, <laughs> Dakota put it into the chat. She's happy to team up too. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Good. Uh, Kelly. Did you have a, something you want to add or question? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I for sure want to practice this. And um, just from my past experience in doing presentations, like practice, 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 sometimes you have to make changes to the PowerPoint. Is it okay to make small changes to the existing PowerPoint? Or is it Master Recycler's goal to have it stay as is? <laughs> This is a sustainability at works presentation. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, if if you find that the flow is a little bit better, you know, I think that as long as the content is covered, um, if you have specific questions on the content, you're like, like the oil and the um, disposable plastics. Like, if something feels clunky, let's talk it out and and, and try and make it work. Okay, like I think it looks great. I just am wondering once I get practicing if. 
I might find a different flow because everyone's a little different. Or also if I was going to maybe try and tailor this to my personal place of employment, if I could add in something more specific to my employment, if that makes sense. Definitely. If you have, if you have some specific um, uh, line of sight into uh, ways to improve the specific workplace, I would say definitely highlight those. Okay. The one thing I'll add to that um, is that the, the only way that I can upload it for you to be able to download yourself is, is to put it in a, as, a, as a PDF. Yeah. Um, so if you're wanting to start tinkering with it and changing it, just, just email Genevieve and she'll send you the PowerPoint um, so that you can actually have the, the thing itself. Um, and what I'm going to do, I, I don't know if you all have been in, um, seen that I have a bunch of PowerPoints in the Master Cycler website now for you to be able to do for Zoom. Um, and what I've done is I've made an image of it that you can download as the PowerPoint. And then there's a link for the one with the talking points like Sharon's asking for. So um, they'll, they'll both be available. So that's what it will look like. But if you're looking at the website and going, actually, I would love this too, or a PowerPoint or something different, feel free to ask Genevieve for, for something else if you're needing that. Okay. So I have one more comment mm -hmm. if I could. So one of the other things I've done in, before my ones at businesses as I ask whoever the person is I'm connecting with is what questions do people have to give me ahead of time? And I have found, you know, Callie, that's really helped me in tailoring if there's certain things, you know, that maybe a slide doesn't really go into, but I think that's where this question would be a good time to talk about it, you know. So that's something you might do is ask, what, what questions are people bringing to the presentation? All right, I see Sharon's hand, and then I'm, I am going to take a pause and see if any of the phone caller folks that, that I can't visibly see if they have questions. So Sharon? So, um, I apologize, I missed the beginning. So maybe you already put together the, you know, the, um, the framing sheet for the speakers. And if you haven't, then I would ask for that. Because I, I do believe that the uniformity in delivery is important for mass recyclers to maintain a branding and to, uh, to be able to know when we update our information. Because, you know, stuff changes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, but I would really, you know, the framing really helps me understand where I stand as a teammate. Um, also, there can be a, like a board where we, we put comments to each other about it. Um, you know, or maybe there's just a board about on this one that says this was rough for me, I, or I didn't have the answer to that, or whatever. And it's not all going through two people, but rather, you know, it's got all the brains of all the mass recyclers to help do that, right? Or I'm going to, you know, a, a nuclear power plant, and you know, what am I going to have to expect from them? You know, that kind of thing. But that's it. The framing sheet really helps me. That way, that each of the engagements are also kind of draped in the trappings that are familiar so that if a guy who's been there for a few years wants a BVAC, then he's getting the same treatment at the BVAC. Um, it gives the business contact person, and they tend to be there for a while, some comfort in, you know, in, the, uh, in having a uniform treatment. That's all, even if the faces are changing. Thanks. So is anybody who is, has called in, so we can't visibly see you, do you wanna unmute if you have a question? Nope, doesn't look like we're getting any questions from those folks. Okay. So one thing I'm also trying to model here, and, and I really want you to, to be aware, and this is probably not gonna be as much of a situation um, in these business settings because it's the business's job to make sure that all our staff have access to, to this meeting. Um, but as you are starting to interact out in the community, if you're using Zoom or all these other interactive things, um, it's, the digital divide has become so much more extreme. 
And um, the more that we can take action to keep being mindful of who's got access to what and how they're connecting and, and adapt to the situation as much as you can so that people um, who don't have a, a, a camera on their laptop and don't have a video, um, they may just called in on their phone, um, that they still have access to be able to ask questions. So you might have to see, oh, there's somebody with just a phone number there. Um, so they don't have a video, they can't, they can't, so you can't make the rule that everyone has to type in their questions at chat. You're gonna have to make a pause and, and give them that opportunity. So I'm just uh, wanting you to, to think about that. Again, I don't necessarily think that's something you'll have to think about in this setting, uh, but it's um, something as mass recyclers, when you start doing outreach in your own communities or um, you know, and, and as we start connecting, um, equity is, is, is becoming intensely more problematic with this the, the digital divide. And so um, being mindful as you're doing this um, and how can we use this tool, but then how can we overcome the, the differences of who has access um, as much as we can. Ah, sorry, my little, I got on my pedestal. <laughs> Y'all know that's my pedestal, favorite pedestal, so. <laughs> so. Um, good. So um, I did offer that I was going to um, help you understand some of the mechanics of Zoom. I think some of you uh, are super comfortable in Zoom um, and, and, and programs like that, and some have not been in it in so much. And again, um, we've emphasized enough that it's gonna be the business's job to um, be the ones driving. Um, but I like to, to make sure that you all are at least know a little bit of the nuts and bolts of, of how Zoom works. Um, and so I just want to um, make sure that you're seeing some of the, the, the tools that we were using. Um, and also understand that it's different on people's phones. Um, so one of the things that, that as people are connecting, um, I'll see them might be struggling and this you again don't have to do in this setting, but if you are trying to do Zoom meetings and other parts of your outreach and community, if you see they're struggling, it might be because they've never been on something before. Um, I usually try to actually encourage people to join a meeting 10 minutes beforehand um, if they've never done it before and help them give my phone number so that they can call me if they're just like, ah, this isn't working. So, so that you can help people connect. And then if they're struggling, start talking to them because sometimes they can hear you, um, but they can't, that you can't see them or hear them yet. So you can start talking to them through, it looks like you're having trouble connecting. You might hover your, your cursor, you might click. Um, so that's one thing that I like to talk people through. Um, some of the tools that you may not have used yet is the screen share. That's what Genevieve used. How many people have used a screen share before? So a good half, okay. Yeah, a good third. So um, it's, it's on, if you hover on, if you're on a laptop, if you hover over your computer on the bottom, some tools at the bottom should show you a screen share. Um, I've set this meeting up so that you can do that on this computer right now. So if you hover, you'll see a, um, a green button. And don't push it right now, please, because I'm, you'll all start, <laughs> you'll start sharing. <laughs> it'll get confused. Um, but then on the top, it'll ask, uh, there's a button that says stop um, sharing. So that's how you get back out of it when you've done it. Um, I am going to do a more in-depth training on how to use Zoom in, um, in a couple weeks. So please RSVP if you want to actually learn how to use some of these tools. But I'm just kind of talking you through what your business partner's doing when they're there so that if you're in it, you kind of understand how that all works. Um, so yeah, so those are just a couple of tools. Then um, Tina did mention that there are all sorts of deeper tools like the room uh, um, breaking up into rooms that I did. You do have to pay for that particular option. Um, also in the screen share, they have some pretty fun. Uh, this one you don't have to pay for options is there is a board, a whiteboard that you can do some visual um, describing and writing up. Um, and so, and then there are ways to, to do polls or games and things like that. 
Um, but those are all programs that um, are, they're all tools that you have to pay for the program. And so I'm really um, starting with scratch with a lot of the training so that master cyclers can do the, the free zoom, you know, and, and and do a presentation in your community. So that's what that training will be if you're wanting to go more in depth in how you use that. Any questions about that? No, good. Thanks for those of you who've already done this a lot. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, <laughs> I wanna make sure that folks are feeling, feeling more and more comfortable using these, these new tools that we suddenly have. Uh, no? Any last questions or thoughts that people have? Genevieve, I wanna thank you again for being a great partner to Master Recyclers. And, and I know you are a master yourself, a master recycler yourself. So, but uh, this is gonna be really great to have um, some, some meaningful way that we can connect in with businesses in Portland. And also I think it's gonna be a good model for our local, other local jurisdictions to go, oh, look, Portland's already engaging master recyclers. Maybe we should be doing that too. <laughs> so that we can start getting more opportunities to, to get involved in different places. So we're, I know us, this is a great team you have in front of you here and we're gonna do great, great, great presentations out there. And in the vein of keeping the Master Cycler uh, program uh, up front, please report your hours. I know that is something I always include with emails out. Please report your hours, all of your prep time, all of your communication time, your practice time. This all um, will help Lauren demonstrate um, how much ma Master Cyclers have an impact in our community. So please, please report your hours. Tonight, um, I see who's here, so you don't have to report hours from tonight. I will, um, I will report your hours for tonight. Um, and Dakota just asked, should we include training uh, this training's time? Yep, I guess that answers the question. Yep. And if you have to go back into the, um, you know, once we get all the tools together, all the time you take to practice, as was talking before, that all counts as as um, master cycler hours. So yes, yes, all of that counts. Ah, Sharon. Are we allowed to um, use this with uh, mixed audiences? Um, I have a, a very active uh, senior center in my, can in my city, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are business owners, and a lot of them are people who live in their houses and are retired, and they're business owners, are, and a mix of all that. And so you're not opposed to this being shown to a mixed audience or my question is are we opposed to that so this one is specifically made by sustainability work i i mean i'll leave it up to genevieve sorry but i am like answering for you but it, i did create one that is a powerpoint on recycle or not um that's for the whole region and you can use that and i'll send you the link again sharon on that okay, so um yeah. I, love, I love this one and does the recycle or not also have the script uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's Maybe a lot more like the one that Genevieve created. This one is a lot more in depth because she figures folks are on a green team. They may be, their biggest problem might be that they're wishful recyclers. And so they really need to see that it's, you know, that, that how the MRF works and they need that, that detail, you know, and so the so recycler or not is for much more of the general public. I think this is the, the level to which we should drag people. <laughs> well we the other one's really good too but they you know it's 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 it, you actually get to play the recycle or not game in the oh, other. I, oh i know that game okay so. are you okay genevieve with it being used elsewhere i am i mean i think if you're if you're willing to put in the time to learn the presentation and and you've got a a group of businesses and homeowners i mean that's why i think i really tried to key in that it is the same at work and at home to kind of um, make sure that folks are doing the same thing in both places. Thank you. Great. So give us a couple of days to put these tools, these tools that we said we're going to send. I'm going to, I'm going to need to clean up this um, presentation that we just did today. Um, and I'm going to, um, um, we recorded it. So I'm going to put it on YouTube and then, um, uh, 
and then we'll be uh, putting that out so sending it to you so you can relook at it if you want if you're wanting to go over the, the details and watch it but we'll also have a link um, to the PowerPoint and the talking points all up uh, um, and we'll send all that to you so look for an email for that and then Genevieve will start doing call outs for um, um, when when you want you know when when there is a business that's interested in it most of them are saying September, October at this point. Um, I, I said we were doing a training and, you know, what's your interest level? And they said, oh, yeah, keep me on the list. Let me check with my office manager and I'll get back to you. So there's definitely going to be some opportunities coming up. Yeah. So it was suggested and Tina was asking, is there a way that we can um, cover how you add pronouns? And actually, I think it's a good question in general and that you may want to decide how you represent yourself. Um, out in the public, the the um, so um, let's see. I kind of forget how I did that. <laughs> I I can explain. So if you hover your cursor over the top right corner of your image, there's a blue square with three dots, and you can click on that and see where it says rename. And when you rename, your name pops up and you can make adjustments to your name. And then remember my name for future meetings. So it's, it's likely you all have done this to get your name on there. There we go. Yeah, and you can choose to put Lauren, Master Recycler, or you know whatever you're wanting to, to put as your ID. But I think it's actually a really good point as well that um, as you're presenting, you may decide you don't want, if, especially if they're recording, um, you know, putting your full name or whatever you're wanting to put on there. So, yeah. Good. There we go. Thank you, Tina, for asking that. Genevieve, Genevieve thank you. And thank you, Master Recyclers. It was really actually my a pleasure to see you all again. And I just want to keep emphasizing we are a community and um, it, it, we've just got, got a little frayed there, but uh, the more and more we can just keep seeing each other and connecting and having conversations, it's just, it, we'll, 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 we're gonna make it back together again as, and connect. Yay, Janet's Janet, finally. <laughs> so good. Thank you for being here. Yay. And it looks like we're going to do a little